just if you got a business, that you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. We are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Mr. President, I don't think we should fundamentally transform America. I think we should fundamentally transform your brain. And over the last 15 months, we've traveled uh, to every corner of the United States. Uh, I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. Barack Obama said that he did not bow down to the Saudi king. No, ha acudido a esta cita. Están viendo ahí. If the president can't tell us the truth about bowing down to the Saudi king, we can't expect him to tell us the truth about anything. And will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you, God. So help me, God. Congratulations. I think we can say that uh, uh, the Constitution reflected a enormous blind spot in this culture that carries on until this day and, and, uh, and that the framers uh, had that same blind spot. I, I, I don't think the two views are contradictory to say that it was a remarkable political document uh, that paved the way for where we are now and to say that uh, it also uh, re reflected the fundamental flaw of this country that continues to this day. Barack Obama did not keep his promise to protect and defend the Constitution. You live here? Yes. Well, maybe you know what a zombie is. When a person dies and is buried, it seems there are certain voodoo priests who, who have the power to bring him back to life. Horrible. It's worse than horrible because a zombie has no will of his own. You see him sometimes walking around blindly with dead eyes, following orders, not knowing what to do, not caring. You mean like Democrats? If you want the truth, we have the truth. It, it has to be democracy with a with a, with a small D. Okay, how are you going to achieve that in the face of an entire American history which speaks against it as a possibility? Welcome to the Ben Gregerson Show. Good evening, uh, Pocatello. Um, there's a lot to discuss today, a lot of stuff in the news, um, a lot of craziness going on in, in Syria and... Uh, I, uh, on Syria, I think that, you know, I'm leaning on the side that I think we just need to stay out of it, because both sides are bad guys. You got the Assad regime, and they're bad guys, and you got the rebels, and they're bad guys. The rebels are bad guys because they're linked to Al-Qaeda. So, if we make any moves in Syria we're going to end up on uh, either side of that battle and both sides are bad guys you know so I think you know I think you know when there's a civil war going on and both sides are enemies you know we d you know we can't get involved you know we don't want to be helping our enemies you know um so I think I think in this case I think we should just leave uh, this issue with uh, Allah to deal with. We'll we'll let Allah take care of what's going on in Syria. <laughs> um, I think right now I think it's best that we don't that we don't get involved in that uh, situation. Um, I've got to say, uh, you know, uh, that I uh, am a big fan of Martin Luther King. I think he's great. Um, I think what he's done for America is amazing. Um, and his, you know, his dream is a great dream. And it's a dream that I believe in. Um, but I must say that I find it, you know quite disturbing or quite sad that that uh, the Democrats are using Martin Luther King to advance their big government liberal agenda. One reason why I think it's sad is because Martin Luther King was a Republican 
And uh, if you don't believe me, I think you should believe Martin Luther King's own niece. Because Martin Luther King's niece says that Martin Luther King was a Republican. And uh, there's a reason why he was a Republican. Um, the Republican Party began as an anti-slavery party. Abraham Lincoln, a Republican, ended slavery. Number two, it was Republicans that gave blacks the right to vote. Number three, the Democrat Party was pro-slavery. Number four, the Democrat Party started the KKK. Um, number four, the Democrats were the ones that uh, legislated those Jim Crow laws and they segregated our schools. Um, it was the Democrats that made blacks go to a different school than white people. Um, it was Dwight Eisenhower, a Republican, that ended school segregation. And Martin Luther King worked with Eisenhower to end school segregation. Um, Martin Luther King actually voted for Eisenhower, and he voted for Nixon. Um, Martin Luther King was a Republican, and Martin Luther King's father is known for being a Republican. Um, I want to uh, play a video here. Um, this is uh, from a relative of Martin Luther King. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as the great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. I have a dream. My four little children one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. This will be the day. This will be the day when all of God will be able to sing with new meaning my country tears of thee. We land of liberty of thee, I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the from every mountainside. I'm Dr. Alveda King, niece of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I greet you today, and I just want to share with you a little bit about my family and my history. My uncle, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., during his lifetime, was a Republican, as was my father, his brother, Reverend A.D. King, and my grandfather, Dr. Martin Luther King, Sr. The Republican Party historically has supported the rights of the oppressed. During the times of slavery, many of the abolitionists were Republicans. Today, we have another issue that is affecting the lives and freedom of many of Americans. Those are the little babies, the preborn. And so as the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I want to encourage you today to remember the rights of all people from the womb to the tomb. Dr. King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Dr. King also said that the Negro cannot win if he's willing to sacrifice the futures of his children for immediate per personal comfort and safety. And so today I encourage you, as you make very important decisions on whom you will vote for, to remember to vote for your values and vote for life, liberty, and justice. Let freedom ring, and if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. There you heard it, folks. You heard it on this show. Um, Martin Luther King was a Republican. Um, and some of you might be wondering, well, why was Martin Luther King a Republican? Well, that's easy to answer. 
It was the Democrats that were fighting against civil rights in the 50s and even in the 60s. Um, a majority of Democrats uh, in Congress voted against the Civil Rights Act in the 1960s. Um, that bill was passed by Republicans. Um, the Republican Party has always advanced civil rights and it's I mean that's what the party was founded on the party was a was a it began as an anti-slavery party and they wanted to give blacks all the rights that white people had and uh, it wasn't it wasn't just an anti-slavery party but it was a conservative party see Abraham Lincoln said that the Republican Party was quote eminently conservative, end quote. Um, so I, I find it kind of strange when I'm watching the TV today and uh, I only see Democrat presidents speaking at uh, this big Martin Luther King celebration at the Lincoln Memorial. Not a single Republican was represented there. And I was like, wow, this is strange because Martin Luther King was a Republican. Hello, welcome to the Ben Gregerson Show. Hi, uh, I'm talking about Democrats, it's my favorite subject. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, I think Democrats are hunkered down to set to keep on with all this well these welfare programs. They're not going to let up on any of them. You know, most of these programs are so ridiculous. Uh, take, for instance, the free cell phones they're giving away. They're being handed out to anyone that says, yeah, I'll take one. See, like most prog like most programs, you know, there are some guidelines, but they're abused, and so you know it gets out of hand. And uh, the other night on O'Reilly, maybe it was last night, O'Reilly Factor, the reporter went out on the streets to talk to people about cell phones, and many agreed they were uh, asked to participate in the program. Well. See, on the, but one lady was <laughs> asked while she was talking on her own cell phone, and one of the rules is that you don't have a cell phone. So, you know, another abuse, the person that was pushing the cell phone says, well, I get a commission for every phone I give away, so go ahead and take one. Just tell me that you're <laughs> on welfare. <laughs> tell uh, me I had to say. That's, uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you're not kidding. The, this the, kind of abuse, you know, it just costs taxpayers tons of money, and, uh, you know, it costs people that are uh, on welfare nothing. That's just one item. What do you think about it? <laughs> well... That's true. That's just that's just one that's just one item, and you know we can't afford it. And what's what's funny about that Obama phone uh, welfare program is that it's already going bankrupt. Yeah, it's I've already been. insolvent, and it's only been in existence for what about a year, two years oh, maybe. Man. Is it that long? <laughs> They've been doing that stupid stuff. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. It's been going on for you know. Oh my word! Maybe two years. It's already it's already bankrupt. You know, I never even heard about it till the other night. Oh really? You didn't no, hear the? I never oh, heard about it. I thought, what another thing? Oh my gosh! You didn't hear the the woman during the election that said she was voting for Obama because of the Obama phones? No, I didn't hear that. <laughs> you got to see that video of the Obama phone lady. Oh, it's really? hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like they say, well, where, where did you get the money? Well, it's Obama money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, I, speaking of welfare, um, we were speaking, you know, right before the call um, about how uh, Republicans had actually given uh, black people their civil rights and everything else. Mm -hmm. But then you look on the flip side of this, you know, what is Democrats given to black people? And all I could say really is that they gave them slavery, they gave them segregation, and then they gave them welfare. Yeah. Um, do you think welfare has really lifted the black community out of poverty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh boy. It, it hasn't. Um, welfare has not lifted the black community out of poverty. No. In fact, if you look at the black community, the whole place is falling apart. Um, the schools there are really bad. And, uh, I mean, 
black communities are falling apart and they're in bad shape. And that's because of Democrats. Um, Democrats have been running the black communities for a long time. And, mm -hmm. and look what it's done for them. Yeah. You know, I don't understand why uh, black people don't understand that. Because, you know, I mean, really and truly, they've been very accepted by the, in the United States. They're Americans. They're... I mean, you know, I, I have no prejudices whatsoever, and I, and I don't even know anybody that does. You know, I mean, that's a thing of the past as far as I'm concerned, and thank goodness for that. You know, I'm thankful yep. for it. I, you know, I'm thinking back. I've been around a long time. I'm thinking back at the time when uh, the ink spots, I don't know if you remember them. They were no. you're probably way too young, but they were very, very uh, revered black, uh, you know, singers. There was... Uh, quartet, I think four or five of them, I can't remember, but anyway, they were wonderful singers, and, and they were back like in the 40s, 50s uh, time era, and uh, they came to Pocatello, and at that time, that was uh, called the Miracle Mile over there on Yellowstone, which is now close to Hernings and in that area. Yeah. Uh, you know, that little place now that's called the Sandbagger, I think it is, and they've got the, the birds out in front, the big... Uh, flamingos you know uh -huh. so that used to be the motor inn and it was a little just a very little cafe and bar uh nothing fancy i'm telling you what it was just very very a poor little place you know but actually the ink spots were uh, at the uh, they were appearing at the delita at that time they brought in quite a few good name people you know for yeah. uh, for uh, bands and and uh, entertainment and they skate on Wednesday night and dance on Saturday night, and so it was neat, you know. So anyway, and I love the ink spots, but anyway, when they came to town, they went into the Motor Inn to get a sandwich. Yeah. Well, they're here, and they were big names. I mean, they were top entertainers, and they turned them out. They wouldn't, and it was in the paper. Boy, I, rem I can still remember that. And I thought, how terrible, how, what is that? Yeah, that's lame. You know, they couldn't go in there because of their color. Now, that uh -huh. was just, it was terrible. And, you know, I mean, a, a lot of people felt that way. And, I mean, you know, it's just, the, the black people have been, they've been, had a lot of abuse and, and have been treated very badly in many ways. But I feel like that uh, that's all behind us, and, and thank heaven for that. It is behind us, and I think we should leave it behind us. It seems yeah. like there's people that still try to make it an issue today and still yeah. try to keep the racism going, and I just think, why don't we leave that behind us? I mean, yeah. none of the white people, you know, none of us today are really, we're really involved in all that racism. Yeah. You know, the people that were, you know, they're all dead, and... Yeah. and gone you know and it's a yeah. new generation so mm -hmm. i don't know why they're uh, you know attacking white people today that have nothing to do with racism you know so yeah, i don't know <laughs> i just you know put it let's put it behind us yeah yeah i'm all for that you know and these these uh these kids that are getting in all this trouble and Oh, there's so many of them. They're just with broken homes you know and they don't yeah. have really don't have the structure and uh, I don't know. It's such a waste. Well, it's sad. And they, you know, they could be. I was thinking, listen to Martin Luther King, and he says, "I have a dream," and you know that people will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the, you know, the uh, content uh, of their character. Know, their, yeah, their character. And I thought, what, what, how wonderful that was, and why are they not listening to that? Why are they not saying, you know what, let's, you know, let's redo this. You know, take it from here and do better. Yeah. You know, but... Well, thanks for... Anyway. Thanks for calling. Yeah, you bet. Have a good night. <laughs> okay, good night, then. Thank you. You know, she makes a good point, you know. Um, you know, that is something, those words, you know. Let's not judge by the color of their skin, but the content of those of their character those are those are powerful words and that was a powerful dream and um young black boys you know they need to listen to that and not just the young black boys but young white boys and people all over america you know that's a message for everybody doesn't matter what color you are um, that's an important message that everybody needs to hear um, 
Now there's actually another video I want to show you, and this is actually of a, uh, this was a, uh, a Democrat in Louisiana, Democrat senator, and uh, he actually switched parties. He recently left the Democrat party and has become a Republican. And uh, he explains why he became a Republican uh, in this video. My name is Albert Lee Guillory, and I'm the senator for the 24th district right here in beautiful Louisiana. Recently, I made what many are referring to as a bold decision to switch my party affiliation to the Republican Party. I wanted to take a moment to explain why I chose to become a Republican, and also to explain why I don't think it was a bold decision at all. It is the right decision, not only for me, but for all my brothers and sisters in the black community. You see, in recent history, the Democrat Party has created the illusion that their agenda and their policies are what's best for black people. Somehow it's been forgotten that the Republican Party was founded in 1854 as an abolitionist movement with one simple creed, that slavery is a violation of the rights of man. Frederick Douglass called Republicans the party of freedom and progress. And the first Republican president was Abraham Lincoln, the author of the Emancipation Proclamation. It was Republicans in Congress who authored the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, giving former slaves citizenship, voting rights, and due process of law. The Democrats, on the other hand, were the party of Jim Crow. It was Democrats who defended the rights of slave owners. It was the Republican President Dwight Eisenhower who championed the Civil Rights Act of 1957. But it was the Democrats in the Senate who filibustered the bill. You see, at the heart of liberalism is the idea that only a great and powerful big government can be the benefactor of social justice for all Americans. But the left is only concerned with one thing, control. And they disguise this control as charity. Programs such as welfare, food stamps, these programs aren't designed to lift black Americans out of poverty. They were always intended as a mechanism for politicians to control the black community. The idea that blacks, or anyone for that matter, need the government to get ahead in life is despicable. And even more important, this idea is a failure. Our communities are just as poor as they have always been. Our schools continue to fail children. Our prisons are filled with young black men who should be at home, being fathers. Our self-initiative and our self-reliance have been sacrificed in exchange for allegiance to our overseers, who control us by making us dependent on them. Sometime I wonder if the word freedom is tossed around so frequently in our society that it has become a cliché. The idea of freedom is complex and it's all-encompassing. It's the idea that the economy must remain free of government persuasion. It's the idea that the press must operate without government intrusion. And it's the idea that the emails and phone records of Americans should remain free from government search and seizure. It's the idea that parents must be the decision makers in regards to their children's education, not some government bureaucrat. But most importantly, it is the idea that the individual must be free to pursue his or her own happiness, free from government dependence, and free from government control. Because to be truly free is to be reliant on no one other than the author of our destiny. These are the ideas at the core of the Republican Party, and it is why I am a Republican. So my brothers and sisters of the American community, Please join with me today in abandoning the government plantation and the party of disappointment so that we may all echo the words of one Republican leader who famously said, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Um, I just find that amazing. You know, the, the, this Democrat senator, or congressman, um, oh, senator, that's what he was, um, that he found the truth. 
you know, he, he learned that the Democrat Party is not the party of civil rights. It was not the party of black freedom. And he's, you know, he's basically saying here, Republicans gave blacks their freedom, gave blacks their rights, and Democrats gave blacks welfare. And how has welfare helped the black community? It hasn't. The black community is just as poor today as it was yesterday. So that's his message. And his message is that um, the principles of, uh, of hard work and uh, capitalism and, and the free market, that those Republican principles can bring the black community out of poverty and can fix their communities. Um, and uh, I know that that's true, you know, because that's the same message I believe in. I believe in smaller government. I believe in capitalism. Um, lower taxes, hard work. Hard work is very important. And um, these principles are our American principles. Um, we just have a few minutes, but there's one thing I do want to talk about now. Um, how many of you saw this? How many of you saw this political cartoon in the newspaper yesterday? Um, this political cartoon kind of got me mad. Um, it's basically Martin Luther King. He's going up to the voting booth to vote. And uh, this guy asks Dr. Martin Luther King for his vo voter ID, his photo ID. Um, this picture, this cartoon is somehow insinuating that a photo ID is racist. Now, I do not understand how this is racist because every American has a photo ID. It doesn't matter what color, they, what color of skin they have, they have a photo ID. And you have to have a photo ID to ride an airplane. So are the airports racist because they require you to have a photo ID? Now, we have laws in this country that say you have to be a citizen of the United States to vote. Now, because you have to be a citizen, uh, shouldn't you have to prove that you are a citizen when you go and vote? That's all a voter ID is, is it's you proving that you are a citizen of the United States. And I do think that you should have to prove that you're a citizen. For one, because we have illegal aliens voting in this country. Um, and that isn't right, because they're not citizens, so why are they voting? And our right to vote should be protected. And it should be the highest integrity, because it's one of the the major things that is protecting our freedoms. Our right to vote is very important to remaining a free country, and I do think that we should protect the integrity of our vote so that there's no funny business going on. Um, so I believe uh, photo IDs um, are a good idea and that you should have one when you vote. There's nothing racist about it. Um, if a Democrat wants to call in on this show and explain how a photo ID is racist, because I still don't get it, um, it doesn't make sense. How's a photo ID racist? Everybody in America has one. doesn't matter what color you are. All it is is a proof of citizenship. And the United States law says that you cannot vote unless you're a citizen. So the only real way to prove you're a citizen is if you show your identification. Nothing racist about that.